First, we had stupid things car guys say, then more stupid things car guys say, then even more stupid things car guys say, but now I present to you the grand finale, the stupidest things car guys say, so get your popcorn, sit in your gamer chair, and rack up the likes, because it's gonna be a fun ride. If it's not factory, it's rice. And here, we have a good old case of peak purist elitism at its finest, but watch me destroy that line of logic with one simple retort. Okay, so you added gasoline. Guess what? That doesn't come from factory. F ricer. Oh, you changed your tires recently? I don't care if they're the exact same brand as before. It's not the ones that came from factory now, were they? F ricer. See how easily dissected that argument is? Sure, you can try and modify it and say, Okay, fine, what I meant to say was, if it's not OEM, then you're a ricer. To again, I have a strong rebuttal. What about people with classic cars, especially people with an old Datsun or old Mustangs, old Camaros, old anything? They literally don't make OEM parts for certain vehicles anymore. What do you want them to do? Throw away their whole car, abandon it in a junkyard when it's only missing a couple of OEM components that are no longer produced, but there are aftermarket companies that make replicas of that component so they can still keep their car running? The reality is, especially with the case of classics, buying OEM isn't always possible, so the argument of if it's not factory, it's rice is just really, really misguided. Even if it's something so mundane, like a body panel bolt or a side mirror, I kid you not, I've seen car show judges, car collectors, and auction attendees break down in tears and even throw fists over such minor aftermarket accessories and say, you lied to me about this car when you said it was mostly OEM. It's like, it is mostly OEM, bro. They didn't market it as pure. Like if someone says pure OEM, then I guess it makes sense to be a little bit mad over something like a side mirror. But like, even for like body panel bolts, those will rust over the years. And it's really easy to replicate those OEM because it's a freaking bolt. And the amount of OEM cars that I see that are kept by collectors, they already have like aftermarket bolts. And it doesn't matter because it's such a tiny component, I don't think it disqualifies the entire car for no longer being OEM. And don't get me wrong, if you want to drive a fully stock or OEM car, more power to you. Because there's a reason why cars are designed stock to begin with. Because 90% of people never modify their cars and they buy it stock. And it's not some random stroke of luck as to why it's that way. Companies study your guys' habits. They know what you guys want, so they follow consumer intel and therefore will release a car that appeals to the mass public because they want to make money, obviously. They want something that has that mass appeal for a ton of money. Also, the designers that make these cars, it's usually multiple teams and by no means are they lazy. Like if you look at like stock Corvettes or stock Civics even, People who make those cars are engineers, they're artists, they even hire psychologists or fashionistas. Cars are an art form, and just like with clothing, they also go through trends. And it's important to supply manufacturers with that knowledge to better help them release an OEM car that pleases as many people as possible. And even if you don't like OEM, like myself, and you're gonna end up modifying a car anyways, I'm still gonna buy an OEM car because I need a platform to build off of. Like, technically, if you're a true modded aficionado, you could probably build a car in your freaking garage, like an SLC or something. But a lot of people who still modify cars still respect OEM cars because it still is the original platform we started with. Now, that's not to say that we're ruining the cars by modding it. And this just brings me into another very similar argument that is also used by the same group of purists, which is that People who modify cars are stupid. Why do they buy a car if they don't like it the way it came? They should have just spent more time finding the one that came exactly the way they wanted so they wouldn't have to modify it. And my response to that is that is such a stupid pipe dream. A lot of people really don't like things the way they come. And this extends onto other technology, like your computer, your phone, your sound system. Some way, somehow, you've modified something on it. Don't lie to me, you've already modified something else in your life. Cars are just one of those things that some people choose to modify. Some people buy cars, never touch them. Other people buy cars, they will touch them. For example, I'm the opposite where I never touch phones. I don't every, I don't even buy them cases or anything like that. I don't decorate them, I don't do it. I have a cheap $200 phone that's called a real me. My phone prior to it was a Nokia that I had for seven years. I just don't really care for phones, they're just a phone to me. But other people obsess over phones and I'm okay with that. 
And in that same vein, that other person may never touch their car, but I customize my car. So we all have that one aspect of our life we want to customize. Now back to the, you should just get it the way from factory. That also is really impossible. Even for non-car people, they get really upset sometimes. So here's a good example. I personally like the Honda Accord about 90% of the way it comes. A Camry, probably 78%. So obviously I'm going to choose an Accord over Camry, however, there's still that extra 10% I don't like about it. But what do you think I'm going to do about it? By doing modifications to the Accord, like let's say maybe I didn't like the color it was. Okay, you know, get the right color. 5% was now reduced, I now like the car 95%. Let's say I wanted it to have like a spoiler and like diffuser and stuff, I just add that and I like it 3 more percent. Now there's only 2% of the car I disagree with, and who cares? And back onto the factory logic, yes, you could order a cord from factory that has the exact wheels you want, the exact interior spec, and the exact color you want, but then you're gonna have to pay an extra $5,000 and then wait an agonizing three to six months for the car to be produced and shipped overseas to a nearby dealer so you can finally drive it home. And how many people do you think are gonna go through that much extra effort? just to get that final 10% of satisfaction versus just buying one that's already on the dealership that they like 90% of the way and they're just like, big whoop, I'm gonna modify it later. It's not like a video game where colors are infinite, inventory's infinite, supplies infinite, modifications are infinite, so before the car even enters your garage in Need for Speed or Forza, you can modify it perfectly off the line so it leaves factory just the way you want it. That doesn't happen in real life. It is very hard to get a car from factory that you want because most people buy them from dealers. It's very stressful and extremely expensive to order them straight from factory the way you want it. LOUD DOESN'T EQUAL FAST! YOU'RE WAY TOO LOUD! This is probably the most annoying and false comment that I see on my own videos whenever it's shared across other various forums and social media outside of YouTube, which is that people keep saying, Oh, it's another fool who thinks loud is fast, or his car's too loud. And first off, computer speakers are a thing, as are microphones and sound design. Oh, and volume buttons too. And this doesn't just apply to my car, I'm sure tons of you guys can relate because this is spammed all over the internet, even in undeserved places. And people make these terrible judgments and terrible comments because videos don't perfectly capture the sound, therefore it makes them comment something stupid based on an incorrect observation. Because what you watch in the video heavily depends on the recording equipment that the person used to capture the sound, as well as the speakers or headphones that you yourself watching the video is listening with. So what you watch in a video, in short, is never going to mimic what you hear in person, because there's too many other variables that you have to deal with versus just standing there and actually hearing the freaking car. And I noticed the reason people think my car is so loud online is actually because of the opposite. Leone is so quiet that basic recording equipment can actually capture her entire rev range, whether that's a smartphone or even throwaway cameras. Because I can travel through my whole power band in a manner where a lot of equipment, even cheap smartphones, can still capture the sound fully, it gives the illusion that my car is a super loud insane monster that must be owned by some dumb teenager with a rich dad who thinks fast equal loud. And we all know that's untrue because I'm obviously a 64 year old boomer because I own a Corvette. Just kidding, I'm only 44. The joke is that my Corvette adds 20 years. Anyways, when you watch videos of straight piped cars, they're so freaking loud that even studio grade camera and audio equipment will peak like crazy and fail to capture them. On top of the fact that if the person who later has to deal with a video in post doesn't know how to edit audio and correct the peaking, it's gonna end up being muffled static buzzing sounds. And because of that, you have all these people in the comment sections who are just like, Oh wow, this is clickbait. That car wasn't actually straight pipe. It was so quiet. They're too brain dead to realize that that car is the exact opposite. It is actually so ear shatteringly loud that it is peaking the audio files and the audio is just not able to capture it properly. And a video will never portray that. You will never feel the quaking of your heart, the bursting of your eardrums, and the instinctive jolt of your arms reaching for your ears. 
That just doesn't happen in videos. This is why I struggle to respect internet car guys. They have the least experience of anyone in the community, yet they always have the loudest of mouths. You don't even need to attend a car meet to draw these conclusions. You just need to have a basic grasp of how audio works online and how that's different from reality. Anyone who spends time around technology would have learned this by now. And I know what it feels like to have your eardrums burst. I've been to car meets, I've been to nighttime takeovers here in Atlanta, and I've heard flame spitting Mark IV Supras, and that taught me real quick that dang, those are loud. That's what it really means to be loud. Here in Atlanta, everyone and their mom straight pipes their cars, and I'm not joking about the mom part this time. I've actually seen soccer mom looking Karens still muffler deleting and running catless long tubes on their freaking Range Rovers and Honda Odysseys. If, it, if a component has the word volume and also reduced in the same sentence together, the average Atlantan is going to respond with a swift yeetus deletus as they bust out their saw and welding tools and just start chopping everything off. I'm not your mother, and I'm also not a police officer, so I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But you shouldn't tell me how to live mine either. I'm perfectly content with the way my Corvette sounds. You think it's too loud? Not my problem. You think it's too quiet? Also not my problem. And to top this video off, old cars equals your poor. And this is a revisiting of something I posted a long time ago. This is probably, hands down, the stupidest thing any car guy could say, which is probably going to be the ultimate finale and conclusion of this series. I once briefly talked about this in one of my old non-car guy videos, and I always thought that car guys were on the same team, so I didn't have to tell them this, and it was just like, haha, let's make fun of non-car people about this. But obviously since embarking on the series, and also just being on YouTube for several years, and just exiting my fledgling cocoon, and actually becoming a full-fledged car enthusiast, I was told the same Mustang crowd-running joke for like the thousandth time, in person and I learned that things only get worse from there because once you actually get your real car go to car meets well you learn that the worst things you hear won't be from non-car people it'll be from your fellow car guys and having an old car in the car community is definitely associated with negative stigma it comes with low status and you're just generally viewed as being cheap because used cars are cheaper and you're seen as a cheap person for using them. And depending on which country you're from, it can get even worse than that because certain places in the Middle East and in Asian culture especially, they really, really look down on old cars. Even the law looks down on old cars. For example, in China, they don't even let you keep cars that are 10 years or older under the guise of, oh, they're not fuel efficient, so they need to get off the roads. So instead of recycling the parts from those cars, they literally just shove them into landfills and discard them because they don't want them to be sold on used markets because they don't want those polluted vehicles coming back onto the roads. Within 10 years, the improvement of gas mileage efficiency isn't enough to justify the removal of entire generations worth of vehicles. Because now more cows have to die for leather, more iron and coal needs to be mined for steel, more fiberglass fumes need to be pumped out into the air, and so on and so forth. I'm certainly not a hippie, but I definitely am a realist. It's better to let that old car run its entire duration of its lifespan, whether that's 20, 30, even 70 years, and then you recycle it actually, just recycle it after that, and then build new cars. There's a reason why they have it, which is it's not for the environment, they do it for money. If you make people have to get rid of cars every 10 years, you're forcing them to revisit dealerships at least once every 10 years so they buy a new car and they're pumping more money into the economy. Now, if you do buy new cars, I wouldn't say be ashamed of it and throw it away and immediately get an old one and guilt trip yourself about environmental harm. Rather, be more self-aware of what you actually just bought. Cars are the second most expensive purchase in your entire lifetime and in, honestly, I don't think people fully grasp that. So from a financial, environmental, and philosophical standpoint, it just doesn't make sense to just keep buying new vehicles. But if you did, please cherish it. Enjoy every A you start at and every B you arrive at. Enjoy the journey in between and every ride that follows. But most importantly, don't you ever look down on people with older cars.